From icebreaker SeaWorld Orlando style family roller coasters to custom flat rides and coasters in construction. The realism here is a perfect opportunity to learn from a subscriber's park who continues to improve in Planet Coaster. Welcome to Adventureland built by Angry Emerald on the Xbox Frontier Workshop. I've structured this video with a fast pace bouncing between coaster to coaster so that you can experience as much time on the incredibly 4 meter smooth rails. And I chose to do this because after really having a good understanding of this creator's styles of parks, I believe the transition areas are best viewed in an aerial view to experience the well planned throughput. So sit back and grab some snacks, maybe even a cocktail as we endeavour through a tropical park you won't want to miss. Getting our tickets checked then, as we fly through the turnstiles of this park, there's a really consistent theme to Angry Emeralds parks and that's with the entranceway. You have these towers and the turnstiles blocked off by the canopies. It would be something I'd like to see change a little bit in future parks. I know you've created so many and I th really think that's consistent throughout. Maybe something different uh, to switch it up would be nice to see next time. But I really like so far you can see the fencing throughout the park is so cohesive in terms of you're fencing off foliage that wouldn't even be dangerous but you just need to fence it off for the upkeep of the park. We're going to go on Car Moon first which I'm really excited to get on because it's actually my favourite coaster in this park. It's a family roller coaster, a family thrill and you have that spike at, uh, at the back just there through the station and I definitely think it's inspired by something like uh, at SeaWorld Orlando, the icebreaker coaster that's just opened there. Lots of people on Planet Coaster giving this a go as it's definitely something you can achieve uh, with a few hacks but in terms of this coaster it actually hasn't used the mechanics that you can use or the, the cheats that you can use uh, to get that top hat working, um, spike working at the back, sorry. Uh, so you're going to launch forward and you can see the beautiful uh, maintenance sheds just here. I must say this is actually themed by Flooded Tombs. I speak very highly of Flooded Tombs, the creator um, on the Xbox Frontier Workshop. And you know, I expect nothing less than pure quality for the theming of this. And that's exactly what you can see in terms of the realism and the gates opening to the coaster. Those doors, I, it's one of my pet hates really, that doors opening and going and clipping through the, through the track. I've talked to Flooded Tombs about this before, and it's really not something that you want. If your doors are clipping through the track, it's nowhere near realistic enough. So I really like how they've got a bit of a border just above them, uh, so they're not clipping through. I like the interaction with the rest of the area, and of course the custom supports are pretty spectacular. The brake runs really nice as well, just looking out into the car park seems very realistic and you don't need too much immersion around here. And then you head into this brake run um, and then you can see going around the corner you can see the spike just above you just there. A really nice integration of this coaster and really well put together as well. You can always rely on Angry Emerald with these coasters to have really nice and smooth, 4 meter smooth, puts the time in and for the console it's about as good as you can get. Um, I know we don't have the 1 meter cheats that you can get on the PC. But moving on next to one of my favourite types of coasters in the world, um, as I and Matty would say, it's just such a fun coaster. These spinning coasters, I love Spinball Wizard at Alton Towers, and I can't wait to get on this one. And definitely the realism is carried through with this one as well. Now this is Angry Emerald theming this coaster, uh, Flooded Tombs just did that last one, uh, the Car Moon coaster. But you can see the realism that you have with the transfer tracks and the station that beams. I've in the past criticised Angry Emerald for not having enough trims on your buildings and just having really flat buildings in general but I really like the look of this area um, so far and I think it's this Mexican area, it's definitely a tropical vibe or at least like you've got loads of palm trees and the foliage that you've used is definitely tropical um, but we'll head through it all and I definitely think this is a note and a good segue into what I want to mention about the foliage is that sometimes it can get a bit overgrown, I know you're really into your realism and at some points, I know that you're so good at making the terrain paint look like things are um, burnt out or whatever, the grass is burnt out or worn away. But I think in this case, you've got a little bit too much foliage at the bottom of that coaster just there, that first drop into the horseshoe. Um, I just think it's a bit overgrown and it definitely clips into things. I'm just not too sure the realism of that. Of course, you'd have loads of bushes at the bottom of coasters. Uh, that's, that's fair enough, but uh, yeah, definitely something I think you could improve on a little bit there, maybe it's just me. But you've got these custom uh, drop towers, I think I made these ones on the Xbox Frontier Workshop, or at least part of them, um, but yeah, really good good use of those. Um, I'm sorry if you've done them and recreated what I did. Um, but then you've got the next coaster, which is a wooden coaster as far as I'm aware. Yeah, wooden coaster, going up the lift hill, it's really interesting how you've got this uh, lift hill with the fences just here, and also how you've got the don't die fencing as you progress up the lift hill. Let me know in the comments down below if you know why this is, because it's something I'd really like to learn, why you've got these 
um, you know, parts of the truck. I guess maybe if you're walking up and doing maintenance, probably for reasons just like that. But the drop is really exciting. Uh, you've got no walkway on the drop, which is quite cool, how you can look all the way down and really see the height of the coaster. Um, and this is really an airtime machine. Um, the smoothness of this is pretty insane. For such a compact layout, the G-forces are really nice and low. I think it doesn't get higher than 3.7 Gs um, max, so really good pacing. And all the way through, around to the brake run, a really incredible coaster. And I love the beams that you've used in there as well. Heading through the rest of the park then, look at those custom fences with the rope. That's something I've not seen uh, done too many times, the rope actually being used as uh, solid fencing pieces. And this is a really quirky part of the park. You never fail to get some really quirky elements, really fun elements into your park. And that's exactly what you've done today. And whether it be through little tributes to past rides that we've seen before with log flumes, etc., you always do a brilliant job of just getting a story into your park. The narrative is always so strong and having this construction area is so fun as well. You can see the track being placed. It's really difficult, I guess, to get it in the different places that you want. You're going to have to do a proper loop around and get uh, where that track needed to be to make it look like it's in construction. Uh, but those towers, I think they're a mainstay of most of your parks, actually. And you've done a really good job of theming that in. And also your first attempt at a custom flat ride. And you can see those custom seats dotted around the park. Whilst they are a bit big, I really like that nod to realism. And you're always progressing in terms of whether it's your signage boards uh, for the queue times or in terms of the don't die fencing, all this kind of stuff. The realism is always cohesive. So heading up the lift hill, I'll do a planet flip cam. If you're enjoying this video, I really appreciate you subscribing to the channel for more planet coaster videos. But without further ado, we're going to get to the top of this lift hill. You can see already really nicely lit up on this lift hill. I must say that the lighting is a bit sparse throughout the park and we'll take a look at it a little, a little bit later. In some areas, it's really realistic, but I think if one thing you need to improve on, it's definitely is glaring out to me that it needs to be lighting. Um, I don't think I've, I think I've rarely explored a park of yours at night and that's certainly something uh, that could be improved. Really nice smooth, I thought we'd go not in the track view for this one, just because of course in real life you'd uh, ride in the seats and you've got the person riding it here. Uh, so I thought we'd just give this one a go. And you can see throughout the park you've got the custom supports, the custom walkways and everything. The evacuation points through the brake runs are spectacular as well. And also this second part of the layout, I was thinking, you don't have too much height here, it's going to be really interesting uh, what this part of the layout is going to be. Is it going to be worth having a whole block section? Is it going to be a bit anticlimactic really? But you really pack a lot into this last section uh, before you go into the brake run, this final helix. Uh, and you find yourself into the brake run with quite a morbid scene where you've got someone being set on fire in the hell cell. So uh, yeah, you've got evacuate evacuation points as well and you know, really nice realistic station as well. And that leads me on nicely to my final two takeaways from this park. I know you like improving from feedback that I give you. Number one, it has to be the lighting. I've mentioned it quite a few times today. And number two, I know you've tried it with the flat rides, but I'd like to see a few more circular buildings instead of always snapping to the 90. So thank you very much for watching this video. I always do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe if you're new around here. And why not watch this video to check out one of Angry Emerald's earlier parks to just see how much they've improved.